that's really all I had to say. <laughs> so, I, you know, you kind of took away my thunder. No, it, it is really a pleasure to be here, and I'd like to thank Holly and the Women's Rights Center for inviting me. Um, Holly, I, I thought we had an agreement that no videos, right? No, no. <laughs> I, guess, I guess not. <laughs> No, I'm okay with that, obviously, I think that, that uh, as, a, as a public figure, you, these, these days, uh, everyone knows you're always on, and so I welcome that, in fact, I have nothing to hide, I, I hope that people do video me, in fact, I've gotten a lot of mileage out of some videos because I'm on YouTube within about 30 minutes of most of these speeches, and my teenage kids just think that's the greatest thing ever. They're like, man, when we, we put you on YouTube, you just show up all over the place. I'm like, well, that's, that's good. So I'm getting some mileage out of that. Uh, she did go over my bio. I was going to go over that a little bit. But I want to highlight one thing that, you know, I am a first-time uh, pol political candidate. Uh, and that you'll see the differences in this race, the contrast between myself and, and my opponent. My opponent is a career politician who's been elected to office, uh, in, both in the state house and as a prosecutor. And that, that's... Uh, I think you'll see that as a sharp contrast uh, between the candidates. Uh, people say to me, Larry, why would a successful doctor like yourself with a, a stable life, a great family, uh, why would you run for political office? And what I've been telling people is because it's about I the ideals, it's about principle. Uh, when President Obama was elected, last summer I just started seeing seeing things go the direction in our country, I could no longer sit on the sidelines. You, you see, I, I've been interested in politics for many, many years. Uh, in fact, I, I thought about running uh, two years ago. But with the, with the government spending that's uh, out of control, and a lot of these issues everyone in this room is aware of, uh, but I want to highlight really three reasons why I really felt like things weren't going the right direction. Uh, the government spending is something that all of us know is heading down a pathway that we're almost not going to be able to recover from. <coughs> the first budget proposed by the Obama administration was the biggest deficit in the history of our country at $1.4 trillion. The next year his budget was even higher. And this year, in fact, you just saw in the news recently, they have now had to admit that the budget deficit for the coming year, even though the Congress hasn't passed the budget, is going to be about $1.47 trillion, another record uh, deficit. This administration, this Congress, doesn't get it. The American people, like us, are telling them that we can't continue to go down this pathway but they're not listening to us. The only way, really, that we can change this is we have to have new people elected to office. We have to have private sector people, new, non-political people. The Founding Fathers, their initial intent was not for people to be politicians as a career. People like us from the private sector were supposed to go and rep represent our district, serve our country, and then go back home, back to our families. And that's, that's what I plan to do. I'm not a career politician. I believe in low taxes. If you look at my website, uh, I believe in low taxes for everyone. We also need to, we need to look at our business tax structure uh, and make ourselves more competitive. Internationally, our companies no longer are competitive on an international stage. I've been talking to business leaders around the district and they're telling me that, look, we have to do something in Washington because we can't, we can't compete. I have one business leader who told me that he's been offered to build a building in a country that I won't mention for one dollar. Fix his, fix his utility rates for the next 10 years if he'll move his entire company out of the United States over there. That's what we're competing against, everyone. We have to recognize that. We have to spend our money wisely. We have to create private sector jobs by allowing businesses to work. The other thing is, is the control issues related to this administration. There's, there's a couple in that, that I want to highlight. One, and I highlighted it on my Facebook about a week or two ago, was with the electronic medical record and the requirement for everyone to have their BMI, which is body mass index, recorded and have the government aware of what that is. And just so you know, from a doctor's standpoint, it's a very inaccurate measure of your health. But what it 
what it is, it's a number, and if you don't fit in a certain category, my feeling is that you may be discriminated against by the government if they require that information. Uh, so that's one thing. And then this week, did you did you see? Has anyone read about the recently about the SEC and what's in the new financial bill that no one really knew about? Well, the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission, now no longer has to give up information by the Freedom of Information Act. They don't. They're not required to. They can, they can have all their documents, and if the press or a private individual or your attorney, if you need to file a lawsuit against the government, request that information. The SEC no longer is required to produce those documents under the Freedom of Information Act. Things like the Bernie Madoff situation, we would have never known probably what really happened and what has happened with that situation. So these are just things that I'm concerned about and why I'm running about the federal government's role in our everyday lives is expanding. Things like this are coming up every day. I'm, a, I'm against that. I think we need to contract the government. We need to keep them out of our everyday lives. And then, of course, as a doctor, the health care bill that passed, uh, I believe, will lead to uh, job loss, which is the number one issue right now in America and in our district, unemployment, the economy. Let's take health care out of it. Let's look at what it's going to do to businesses. I've spoken to small business leaders around the district. They tell me the requirements in this health care bill are going to make small businesses, many of them, go under. They will not be able to maintain the business because they, can't, they will not be able to live up to the requirements under this bill. So we're going, to, we're going to experience job loss. People are not going to hire people. The other thing is there's a cutoff of 50 employees to to fit into this bill. Companies that have just a few more than that, they're going to let people go. People that Companies that might hire more people so that they'll get people into the workplace are not going to hire people based on the health care bill. And look at what it does to biz, big companies. It's not only small companies. Uh, AT&T, they estimated that their health care costs uh, over the next year for their employees and their retirees would total about $4.1 billion in expenses, believe it or not. But if they choose to drop their health care for everyone and just pay the government penalty, they may only owe the government eight or $900 million. So you look at a big company like AT&T and you say, well, well, you're on the board of AT&T, you're the CEO, you can spend $4.1 billion doing the right thing. 